A very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Design Meetup 2.0, powered by IXTF Kerala and co-sponsored by Experion Technologies. Today, web-based platforms provide an easy way to communicate and give us a plethora of services from the comfort of our homes. As designers, it's important for us to work on designs that are accessible and inclusive universally, including users who are differently able in terms of visual, auditory, motor, and cognitive abilities. Kiran P, an experienced lead UI, UX designer, will be taking us through accessibility in web design, that is designing for everyone. To talk about our speaker today, Kiran is a lead UX designer and he has over seven years of experience in design. He's from Arur, a beautiful suburb in the city of Cochin. After graduating in visual communication, his interest for art and design brought him to web design, where there was more focus on advertising. So he wanted to take up something more challenging, which is how he started with UI design. He was particularly interested in motion graphics and UI interactions, which made his transition to UX quite natural. When he's not working, he loves drawing, gaming, and traveling. For the ease of a better experience, we've muted the audience mics during the presentation time. Please raise your queries in the chat window. Although we have an exclusive Q&A session after the webinar where the audience can interact and discuss. So you can drop in questions during the session as well, and we'll probably address it in the end. Uh, a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. And for those of you who are just joining us, welcome to Accessibility in Web Design by Kiran P. Over to you, Kiran. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. So yeah, thank you, Antana. Thank you for the warm welcome. And yeah, <laughs> welcome, everyone. And thank you, actually, for IXTF Kerala for hosting this session. Actually, I really found it very interesting, like, because I'm, I'm also learning a lot with IXTF Kerala because every every like every two weeks someone is coming with some interesting topics and we're all discussing i mean ux is all about like learning and sharing so i'm really interested and i hope to see uh, more more sessions in future also so yeah welcome everyone so uh, as you all know we are here today to discuss about the accessibility in web design so uh, before we dive into accessibility let's just uh, let's just uh, find to understand what this accessibility the word really means so from uh, my my very you know, knowledge accessibility means stability for everyone uh, regardless what age or what kind of uh, disabilities or dif differently able people can access something like very very easily so as uh, if we if we check on wikipedia also it would refer to like accessibility refers to design of product services or even environments of people who experience disabilities. So that's what about, it's uh, all about accessing our, anything about it related to web or not even related to web with, with people with disabilities, which we are concentrated to. So why I really choose accessibility is because uh, I, I really know so many people uh, in person and also I, I even know some of uh, my colleagues also. So. Uh, I, I know how they are struggling to use some of these applications and even some of the websites. So I thought it should be really relevant if we start talking about accessibility and include that in our really daily life. So it, it could be a better world for them also to interact with it like every day and uh, just imagine like uh, they are about to use it as much as we can and they are able to interact there even to contribute something to that also. So. Yeah, I hope uh, from now on, I mean, if it make a difference uh, from this a small session, it would be really, I will be really careful for that. So uh, let's, uh, I just prepared some small slides. So I will just give, give a, a small introduction and uh, I have prepared some slides, which I, I will just uh, basically show you what are the different kind of uh, disabilities or difficulties they face while using the web and how we can overcome that. So uh, let's go, let's, let's start and let's see. Uh, so uh, as you all know, uh, I just uh, 
briefed about what is really accessibility and uh, we can we can look into what are the different kind of is it, i mean difficulties which people face so mostly it would be uh, related to vision or hearing or motor or physical or cognitive kind of difficulties so we will be discussing like uh, i i've just uh, uh, taken some slides from the government of uk they have defined i, I will give that link in the chat like um, you can you can go and check their website like how they are defining that and how they are trying to uh, get that in their system so these are the major kind of difficulties uh, which people face while using the web it could be vision or hearing or motor or cognitive so uh, we can we can discuss about the vision first or with the even the vision as we say may not be the person may not be completely blind or it may have been with the low vision as well so uh, i would just uh, like what are the type of uh, visual disabilities or visual difficulties which they face. So I've just uh, came up with some of those. They are like a loss of central vision, loss of peripheral the sight vision, blurred vision, generalized haze, extreme light sensitivity or night blindness. So these are the major kinds of uh, visual, visual uh, difficulties which people face. So we can even, it may not be even uh, with, with the blindness, we can even think of like using our cell phone in like a very bright light so if we have turned off our automatic address, uh, brightness adjusting it would be so hard for us to read the displays right so that's also a situation for us it's it's not like i'm i am having a disability but it's it's a situation like an environment which creates like i'm not accessible to that so how can we overcome that so that's basically it like we are going through some of those examples and how we can like solve it so uh yeah basically i've uh, taken from this accessibility block from government of uk so uh, these are basically the do's and don'ts which we have to take about uh, accessibility so uh, as they say designing for the users with low vision we do have to use good color contrast and readable font size so how how it will affect uh, the people with uh, low vision so if you can see uh, the text and the foreground, foreground and the background, it, it's clearly differentiable. Like the text are really readable, the text are big in size. So imagine like a, a, a person with low vision or even he's having a color blindness. So he would be seeing this text as, uh, as you can see on the right side, it's, it's a very light text on a small text and on a very light background. So from their perspective, they would be seeing this as a uh, very light shades of gray and uh, light color. So it just think from their perspective, it would be really hard for them to read. Even, even think about even our, our grandparents. So they also will be having this uh, very, very poor vision, some of them. So it could be really hard for them to read. So always try to make it like, uh, trying to make it accessible for everyone. Like if it should be readable for everyone, we should make it that color contrast would be uh, really good to differentiate with, between the foreground and the background and make the text a bit bold so everybody can read it. And when we go to uh, next slide, we can see publish all information on web pages uh, rather than burying them in the downloads. Uh, we can even see that in a lot of, lot of website, even our government website, like uh, most of the information we see are, are just uh, on, on the page, I mean, and the other information, very relevant information, they are hiding inside uh, downloads. Like they'll be even hiding inside some white papers. So, so avoid doing that, like uh, keep it inside the website also. I mean, let it be accessible for everyone. And yes, the combination of color, shapes, and text. So uh, as you have seen uh, going through so, so many websites, there could be some buttons like, uh, click here. So they won't be clearly specifying like what is that button for. They would be just like a click button. So try to uh, like uh, uh, explain explain the button, like what that button for. So and uh, use the color to convey meaning. So if you have gone through some uh, shopping website, you can see like if you, if you choose a bag or a shoe, it would be like mostly would be like uh, this, this kind of palettes which you can see to differentiate the colors. So imagine like a, uh, a user with 
color blindness is using that and he would be just seeing that as a different shades of gray as i said earlier so how can we solve this like uh, we can we can put a text right next to this red color palette so they can even differentiate the oh that's okay that's the red color so this is the yellow one so that doesn't even i mean apply to the color blinded people maybe as i said earlier with the environment when i am outside if i am using my phone on my a bus or uh, even a train or something so it 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 might even and i have even noticed like uh, i have been uh, outside and you know some of the roofs these days come with different colors so sometimes when you uh, use your phone beneath that so it it was projecting a blue light from the roof so when i see, when i was watching my phone i was seeing the colors very different so if if there are some text uh, along with our palettes like defining what color it is it could be really useful for them as well and yeah uh, to following a linear logical layout it would it would be really really helpful for the people with the low vision because mostly the people with the low vision they would be using their screens as uh, in in the zoomed position so it would be uh, zooming the website to the 200 percentage so if we, if we try to i will just try to zoom the uh, link in here so if we try to zoom the text are going out so you cannot even see so there are specific uh, like uh, features that we can uh, uh, fix the zoom inside of aspect ratio and keep uh, when we zoom in the fonts only will be get enlarged so it would be easy for the, our, our old age people also to read the text and also the content and uh, yeah yeah and uh, this is something like uh, keep keep the buttons and notification in context like rather than keeping the button i mean if it's a form field or anything keeping the submit button uh, very near to the uh, field it would be really accessible for them to uh, make that easy contact with it like rather than keeping it away from the field or is it it, it applies to anything like even filling a questionnaire or anything so yeah, that was most of it from the low vision. And uh, next we goes to like, what are the uh, difficulties like the people with hard of hearing? What are the major difficulties they would face and how we can solve? Like, uh, so when they are having this problem with hearing, like, uh, I mean, if they they have this uh, difficulty with with the speech and hard of hearing, they won't be that uh, like uh, accessible like us to interact with people so uh, i have what i have faced in uh, some of my colleagues back so uh, they know how to how to interact but uh, i mean their level of interaction is very very much less than what we do so uh, the the kind of i mean their level of communication is very less they 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 hardly know some of the words so if if we try to if we are going to make a sentence like uh, if we're going to put in uh, a very hard paragraph which are grammatically very good but if it's hard for them it would be really hard for them to read and understand so what if we are putting it like a very plain english very easy to read so that kind of people can also access it very very easily and this complicated figures it it would be really complicated for them to understand and and go through it and yeah uh, use provide transcripts for videos just imagine uh, uh, uh people who uh, having the hard of hearing trying to watch a video i've even seen that even even i have suggested some of website to some of my colleague who was having this difficulty so there were no uh, like subtitles or anything so it was really hard for them so it i think it's our responsibility to think of that and keep in our design so it would be really easy for them and yeah, again, to use the logical layout, it would be really, really easy for them to navigate throughout the website. And yeah, um, giving the content also, it, it's really relevant to keep it, uh, to distinct between, between the sections. And I mean, uh, I, I mean, if it's an image, if we can give a short description, like a short intro about that, it would be really, really good. And yeah, uh, this thing is like, I mean, even if you have interacted with any of this uh, call to action, you can see that in, in some of the website, it would be, there will be only a call to action as a call button. So 
imagine a person who cannot speak uh, he need to he also need to access the website and if there is an option to chat also it would be really helpful for them so whenever we are trying to next time to uh, bring it a call of action or a contact button just uh, try to keep it a chat also so it would be really helpful for them to they can also interact with others and uh, yeah that was mostly with hard of hearing then we can go to the uh, physical and motor difficulties what are the major uh, difficulties that they face like when it could be like a, a, a permanent or or a temporary or even i mean i have i have uh, like i've been on uh, a bad accident like two or three years back and i've been on bed like uh, two or three months so uh, even at that time i also had a broken hand and a leg so i was using almost uh, the devices with one hand so that time you can imagine how how difficult it is to use these devices with one hand so if if you are making it like these uh, clickable buttons or things like uh, a little bit more uh, larger than uh, what you do usually it would be really useful those uh, for those kind of people so uh, for that uh, i can uh, i was working on a project like last 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 week so i've been doing a questionnaire so uh, uh, the main interaction with the questionnaire what to there was a multiple choice of questions so the main interaction was to click on one one uh, this radio button so the radio button was the only thing which was working on that interaction so while in that we have to look into correct the radio button and we have to click there so for that if you are trying to make that whole area selectable it would be really easy we can even uh, take a take a, a a pencil or anything a stylus or anything we can click on that question it would be really accessible for them rather than keeping it very precise on a small location so yeah give give the forms and fields a little bit of space like if you are making it really differentiate i mean the contents are really we can see the difference and the space it will be really easy for them to interact then yeah this this is something really major which we have to i mean the people with uh, physical abilities they uh, i mean not even the people with difficult abilities i i even know some of my friends which they they don't even use keyboard i mean mouse they really go work with their keyboard all the times and yeah so imagine the people with uh, physical abilities also uh, while doing i mean they they mostly doing with the keyboards to navigate through the website as you all know like we will be using the tab button to go to the next window or even to the next menu or the arrow buttons to go around so try to use this keyboard and uh, speech functionalities inside your website or application to make it accessible for them and uh, one of the other thing is to create shortcuts inside your so if you are creating shortcuts like control plus a uh, give this command control plus d gives this command so that kind of shortcuts uh, also can make their life more, much easier and uh, yeah <clears throat> yeah keeping it uh, keeping in mind like uh, mobile and touch screen designs in mind like if you are uh, like introducing some uh, hovering hovering effects or or some hovering interactions uh imagine it how it would be on a smaller device or a touch screen device uh, like we are not even using the mouse so there are some some environments i mean some situations which they can uh, place like uh, we need to think of so on this design phase if we really consider these much things it would be really helpful for for that kind of situations as well and uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah and this is some of i mean something related to ux as well to provide the shortcuts i mean rather than having a, a full full three or four fields of address you can just put a put a, just a, a field for a postcode so it can automatically detect what's that real address so at least we can uh, reduce some of two or three fields which would be really uh, easy for the user to go and interact it with the, with the system so uh, that was it with the uh, physical and motor difficulties uh, we can now uh, speak with what are some of the difficulties which the uh, autistic people would face so uh, 
Yeah. Uh, so the two they say is to do the use of simple colors rather than using the bright and contrasting colors. So this is something which uh, I've been also I, I also experienced that in one of my older projects. Like we have been uh, designing a classroom, a virtual classroom for autistic children, and at, at that time only I, I came to know about this. Like I've been studying about the behavior of the autistic uh, children, like how how their behaviors would be, how they will interact with this actually they are kind of really anxious so introducing this contrasting colors and using very bright colors actually it would really make them a little bit uncomfortable at some time so uh, considering them at the point if you if you really care about your end, end users and you know if if uh, 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 autistic kid or autistic uh, people is about to use your product and try to uh, make it a little more i mean uh, useful for them as well by using the simple colors and yeah, uh, they also will be having this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, limitations of this uh, communication. So writing plain English would be really easy, uh, easy for them to interact with our system as well. And by using the simple sentences and bullet and keeping it in order, like if you can relate an Im image and uh, this text is related to that image, it would be really useful for them as well. And yeah, make uh, this is something which you have uh, discussed earlier, like uh, make the buttons descriptive, like rather than a button to click here, just define it like what is that button for? Or what, what does it happen if you click on that button? So it would be really helpful and meaningful for them as well. And yeah, and uh, for uh, building simple and consistent layouts. Like, as I said before, uh, like uh, building a consistent layout, like uh, if we are designing a layout, like in a very, very simple way, like if we can see it and understand like, uh, okay, this, this content is related to this. So that relativity really matters for the people like this. So try to try to build the layouts like in a simple and very attractive way. And yeah, uh, there are something which also need to think about the screen readers. So who are the screen readers? Uh, so it can be a lot of people, the screen readers, even even can be our old age, I mean, even our parents uh, sometimes. So uh, what they what they really do is like, uh, I mean, they, they would be reading on the screen with the, with the help of their speech and everything. So for that if we need to uh, describe our images and provide transcripts on the video it would allow them to uh, i mean it, i mean get the audio from the system so it would be really helpful for them and yeah this is something which we have discussed about about linear and logical layout uh, so when you are using the tab or anything in the keyboard itself you can easily access i mean go through the between the menus and everything and yeah, uh, this is something like to distinctive uh, content about using the headers and numbers. I mean, uh, to keep that really uh, different, what is what is a header and what is a content. Keeping it really in that specific size can uh, really make it easy for them to understand and read it properly. Yeah. Uh, building for keyboard only use. Yeah, this is something which we discussed earlier, like uh, making the system or the website accessible with the keyboard by using the shortcuts and also uh, allowing them to navigate uh, the website through the keyboard with tab buttons and uh, arrow buttons, it would be really useful than just focusing just on the mouse. And yeah, uh, about descriptive uh, headings and links and buttons also can be really helpful for the screen readers. And designing users with dyslexia. So what is dyslexia? It's it's something, uh, a difficulty which uh, some people face while reading. They can, it would be really hard for them to read at some times. Like uh, that, love, how we read as dyslexia, it would be really hard for them to arrange the text as it is. And it would be really hard for them to read it sometimes. So if you can put some images, like if you are showing uh, a car, like if you can put the image of a car and you can uh, describe it with, 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 along with the images, it would be really helpful for them. So rather than putting a very blocks of he very heavy text using simple images uh, to make it easy for them to understand, it would be really nice. 
and like yeah as aligning the text uh, keeping the consistency and keeping the simplicity it would be really good for, as well mm, then considering producing materials in the form as form of audio and video like as you know it it, it would be really hard for them to read so like if you're putting it some um, audio audio files to descriptive uh, if you can click on a button and or they can explain like what it is uh, what it really is what they really want to convey so that also will help them to uh, interact with it and they can even understand understand like we do so, and yeah this one is also about the content to keeping it simple like the layout keeping it simple and exactly yes for i mean when when they are when it's really hard for them to read uh, to optimizing the contrast of the of our content and the background can make it really a, a good difference to make it readable make it easy for them to read and understand so uh, that were some of the major things like uh, we could we could care about uh, i mean major difficulties while uh, using i mean uh, this uh, disabled or difficulty uh, differently able piece people face using this system so uh, that was some of it and uh, these are some guidelines actually i mean uh, when even uh, when you when you work on like a projects in some of the countries like uh, us or europe they even have some of these guidelines when we have to create website like a, if you are creating a federal website uh, they have these rules like uh, if you are creating a website for these people, your website should be accessible to everyone. So there are some web content accessibility guidelines like WCAG or ATAG or um, yeah ADA compliance. So there are so many compliances like that, and they do have a, like a different checklist which you need to consider. Like it, it, it also come under like what we. So there are even uh, some some more like guidelines which we need to. I mean, it, it depends on. Uh, I mean, each country is like when we go to US, there is a WCAG and a ADA. So it, it different upon upon uh, the locations. So there are even some guidelines which government had created to make our website or the application or the system uh, compatible for the users. And. Yeah, uh, that was some of uh, my findings on 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 the accessibility uh, on my perspective. So, as designers, we it's our responsibility actually to make our the, the design we create make it accessible to everyone. So, I'm I'm not even saying about uh, just not just um, concentrating on the website. So, you can even keep this in mind uh, when creating anything like uh, it. It don't have to be a website or have to be an application. Try this, uh, keeping it, uh, keep reminding this while you create a home. Like if you are creating a stair, uh, make it, uh, I mean, try to remember them to like uh, the people with uh, that kind of dis disabilities could be also uh, facing that. I mean, if, if we can make it easy for them also, it would be really good, right? So when you're creating a home or building a home, like if you're putting it like rather than make them very very complex stairs like making it more simple and making it more accessible it would it would be really i mean i mean <laughs> i would say the world would be a better place if we, if we try to keep this in mind and like design very wisely so as designers i would say it's it's actually everybody's responsibility to keep this in mind and uh, like making this technology uh, accessible to everyone <laughs> 